I'm Patrick Bailey with whiteboardcoder.com. Today is March 24th, 2016, and this video is round two of tweaking my SBT shell prompt. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be going over how to tweak it to show the Git branch I'm on, and I'm also going to use FontForge to add some Unicode characters to the font that I currently use so I can get a power line look to my SBT prompt. So at the end of the day, it will kind of look like this. We'll have a, we'll have a project name in here. And we'll also have what, what, uh, Git branch we're on. And also we have some special icons in here. So we have this little thing that looks kind of like a branch. And also we have this power line look and feel with the angles. So that's what this video is going to cover. Now, if you watched my first video, I put a gist up showing, um, my global SBT file. And here's, here's actually where it is. So if you haven't watched that, you can go download this so you can get the actual code, but I'll put a link in the show notes. So what you can do, if you haven't done this already, you can, tweak your global SPT file, uh, SPT 0.13 global. And I'll just, this is a copy and paste from that, but, and so this just goes through and basically says, it defines the colors and the prompts and how it all should look. Fairly simple if you watched the last video. And now it'll be applied to any SPT um, build you're working on. So if I type SPT here, I should see my custom prompt. There we go. There's my custom prompt. Uh, but I want to add to it and actually add something to the first line here that shows uh, what the current branch, git branch we're on. So we go back in here and edit this. And I'm going to go add a, another row in here. I'll just call it uh, git branch. And at first we're going to do a little simple just to get it working. There's going to be some problems with this. And we can use the process. Get, oh, well, before I do that, uh, here is a simple git command line to actually get the current branch you're on. So I can do git rev parse abbreviate, I guess, dash ref head. And that should get just the, just the branch you're on. That's all I want. And there I am on master, so it works. I'm just gonna repeat that. That's all I'm doing. So I'm using the process, and I have rev.parse and rev, rev head. Simple enough, right? Uh, and then I do let's see lines.head. And so that'll just give me that git branch. And then I want to take that information and actually put it down here. So I'll say format text s. Let's say git branch, simple enough. And I'll make it uh, black with a yellow background. There we go. So just save that and run it again. And now I should have my git branch added. Hopefully. Error. Oh, that should be lines. Oh. Quit. Let's do quit. Sorry, my mistake. That should be lines, not line. Now it should work. There we go. So now I can see I'm on the master branch, which I showed you before by just running the command. So I actually have the information I want. Uh, but now I can go out here and say, I can make a new branch just to show you that it actually is working. So I can say, uh, get, if I do branch, I should list my branches. There we go. So I do get branch and I'll make a new branch called test branch. And show that it's listed. And then I'm actually, oh, uh, Check out test branch. All right, so now I'm on the test branch. So now if I run it, I should see test branch versus master. There we go, test branch. And let me exit out of here. But there's a problem. So now if I go to a with the code, if 
I go to some place where I don't have a Git repository and I try to run it, I'm going to crash. Because it's, not, it's assuming that you have a Git repository, and if you get an exit code, it's going to mess you up. And there's my error. It's got a non-zero exit code. Screwed the whole thing up. Now we can fix that. I'll show you the, a quick fix right now, and then we'll do a more complex fix here in a minute, a better fix. But a simple fix I came up with, so we could say git branch equals try. We can put this in a try catch block. Not the ideal way to do it, but it's, you know, it works. And so you can say case, we have an exception. And if we don't have a git, we'll just put out not git. And there we go. But what we're going to try is we'll try the same process. And so that works well enough. So if the process works, we get the branch, we get the, uh, the branch we want. And if not, it just says this is not, this is not a Git repository. And that works well enough. So now if I run it, it shouldn't crash on me. He says, hopefully. Oh, well, that works. Well, I'm going to fix this code anyway. I don't really care about it, but I guess it, well, maybe I should fix that. So we have not get. Sorry about this one. Yeah, I guess I should fix that. Let's be proper. Okay, and I'm just going to throw this away anyway. Okay, so now there we go. So we have the not get. And if I get out of here and I go into something that does have get, I should get the get branch just fine. There we go. Okay, so now next I found a more proper way to do this. I found some good code to do to uh, handle this a better way. And so I'll show you the information I found on that and what I did. So that'll be next here. Now, if you're going to be dealing with the uh, command line and processing information from that SBT, it's probably best to you know write a little bit of code so you can deal with the information you want, your exit code, your standard error, your standard out. And looking around, I found this nice bit of information at Stack Overflow. And here's the URL. And I'll put it in the show notes. And if we scroll down here, there's someone here, let's see, uh, Rogosh, I guess, made a really nice... A uh, little method here that would actually you can run a command and it would give you the exit value centered out and centered error and it works pretty well but it doesn't exactly work in sbt so there's some little issues because sbt had its own process logger i guess and i i could tell you better two days ago because i had it more in my mind but long story short this will work beautifully in scala it won't work in sbt uh, so i came up with my own now, what you can do is you can actually go over, I made a gist for this, and here's the URL for the gist with the updates. And you can just copy this and bring, and, and uh, put it on your machine if you want to. And so here's the run command. Very similar. I'm basically almost copying what he's done, but I have to make my own process logger because it's SPT process logger, and there's a reason behind that. Uh, but I get my exit. At the end of the day, same same thing. I get my, I can do my run command. I get my exit value, my centered out, and my centered error. And then what I do is I just run the command. So here I run the command. I run the command we did before, but I have to split it and make it a sequence. And then after that, I can match the output. So if I get what I expect, uh, if I get an exit code that's not zero, then of course I want the no get. And if I get something that is uh, has the standard out, I put the standard out in. It works pretty well. Uh, but also I can reuse this run command for something else at some point. I can see that happening. So let me edit what I currently have and get that working. Let me just copy all this over. Wait, doesn't don't they like a copy a clipboard button here? They don't. That seems a little weird. Okay, but anyway, just to go over that again, the only thing I really change is this run command. Here, this run command, copy and paste, it's going to give you your exit value, your standard out, and your standard error, and then just run it. And so it's going to run it, and if I 
get an exit value that's not zero, put no get, otherwise just put the get uh, put the output out, which will give me my, in this case, my uh, branch. And all the rest of it's pretty much the same that we had before. So now, if I run it, I guess I'll get, I'll get the same results, but it's just a much more elegant way of doing it. Okay, there we go. And I also changed the Unicode just to have uh, just these. I'm using Unicode up here, and you may not have the Unicode, so I just change it to the greater than symbol, I guess, uh, just to make things symbol, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, now if I go down to something that doesn't have a git branch, oh, let me exit out. If I go to something that doesn't have a git repository, I should see no git or not git. Okay, perfect. Uh, so now next, I'm going to talk about special Unicode characters I want to add. Okay, Unicode characters. Now this is where it gets a little interesting. So let me get into this, and let me go back and edit my the .spt file for the global.spt. So let me edit that. But in fact, uh, let me go get ahead of myself. Uh, here's where I put up a gist for what I'm doing now that has the Unicode characters. So there's the address. I'll put that in the show notes. And all this is, is adding a few more tweaks to what I did last time, but it's adding, it's just adding Unicode characters in a specific way that makes it kind of look like, um, the system they call Powerline, I guess. I'll, I'll, maybe I'll show that in a second here. There's these Powerline fonts. If you haven't, aren't familiar with them, they're kind of cool. And so that's kind of what I was going for. Let me see if I can... Let me pull up a URL here. When I was poking around, I found this. And this might actually work for most people because I think it is an SBT prompt thing. I just haven't dived into it. But when I looked at this, I found this little cool interface. And I liked it. I was like, oh, that's kind of neat because it, it put a little Unicode character in here. It looks like, kind of looks like a branch. It's got the angles, and that's kind of nice. But as with anything, well, I guess there's two aspects to this. One, I wanted to learn how to do it myself. And two, this may do everything I want. I don't know. But I always have a feeling that it may not do exactly what I want. I may have to tweak it. So I didn't even... I didn't even download this, but this may be a solution for some people. Uh, but I guess it uses these Powerline fonts, which add um, some Unicode characters that I'll show in a second here. Um, but that was my inspiration. So anyway, let me go. So here's my new my new code, which has a bunch of Unicode in it. And so if I go down here, it's pretty much the same as I had last time. Scroll down, scroll down. Um, but I've added a few special Unicode characters, and I named them. So I named them a branch, and a lock, and a right arrow, and a left arrow. And these um, are coming... This is what the... I'll show in a minute. This is what the, the special Unicode characters that Powerline is using. And I'm just kind of rinsing and repeating what they're using. Uh, and then I come down here, and I put them in specific places. And also, here's where I use my own that I used before, uh, 2776F. That's a Unicode character I use for myself. Um, anyway, so that's what it is. Let me just close it. And let me open it up and show you what it looks like. And there we go. So here with my project name, that's still the same. Uh, the branch I'm on, still the same. All I've added is this is just a Unicode character that kind of looks like a branch. Um, and also, there's a character here at the end. You can kind of see it there that looks like just a big angle. And so that... This orange is actually in the yellow, so I just did that. So it just kind of makes it look like it's angled in, and that's kind of what Powerline does. So I kind of repeated that. And then these are my own. You can see this is what I use for my command line, and so I just made these all orange, but three of them because that's what I'm used to. Um, but this is this is not Powerline. That's what I use. Now, let me go show you a few more URLs before I go too far. Here is Powerline at GitHub. And so you can go dive into Powerline and see what they're all about. I guess they're kind of cool and they had all these tools. I think you can even install it in Vi somehow and do some interesting things with it. Um, and then they also have Powerline fonts, which are going to become important in this tutorial I'm doing in a minute. So you can actually go download these fonts and you should get the, um, you should get it to work. 
Now, in theory, these fonts have a Unicode character for this Unicode character and this one, and these are the same. So the, if you can download those power fonts and use it on your command line and download and use my, uh, what I put on it as a gist, it should just work except for the, except for these. These are, these are unique to what I did. Um, but I'm using Sigwin. So there's a lot of weird Sigwin ness. And so it, Sigwin does not like a lot of fonts. So I actually had to go tweak my own font to make it work, but I did copy from the power line font. So I'm going to do that here in the next section section. But before I do, I am going to go, uh, undo the font that I'm currently using. So I can kind of go back to what you may be seeing, because if you don't have any Unicode fonts, I want to show you where you should start out. So to cover my butt on Sigwin, I'm going to go change fonts before I delete a font and then mess myself over. So I'm just going to do a, just a normal boring font. That's going to look hideous probably. And it does look hideous. Uh, but yeah, you can see it doesn't, that particular font doesn't support my, my specific Unicode. Oh, ugh. before I do that, let me go back a second. There's a cool thing I found in Linux where you can test if you can actually display a Unicode character in the font you're using. So let me go back a second. There we go. Uh, there's this command you can run and I've actually found out it's not quite perfect. <laughs> So I, but it works for most things. I can do echo dash E and then I can do a Unicode character. I go U two seven two seven six F. And if it can do the Unicode character on your command prompt, it should do it. And so there it did it. However, it is a little finicky. So if I look at my gist I put up here where I have these extra Unicode characters, it won't work for these that are in the E0 range, and I don't know why. Um, now, the E0 range, my understanding, is kind of a weird range, and so there's maybe some reasons behind that. But if I do this, which in theory should work, I get that. However, when I actually use it for real, it actually shows up. So I don't know what this, maybe it's just Echo can't handle anything in the E0 range. Don't know. Uh, but it's nice to know that you can test some things, and some things, even if they don't work, they might actually work. I don't know what that's about. Um, okay. Now let me go back and wipe my font out. So I can kind of start fresh because I am going, in the next section, I'm going to download and fix a font to make it work. So I'll go to just something. There we go. Now we want to download a font. Now I'm actually using the sans typewriter, which I guess is, I think it's part of the windows. And so it's hard to find, but I found this one URL where I can download it for free, but it's, I've already paid for it because it's part of windows. Otherwise, you know, don't go downloading fonts that you shouldn't have access to. But if you hit this URL, it'll download this font. And I'll show it in my folder and open it up and so here's all this goodness and i only need i don't need all of it i think i just need that one that one should probably be enough so that's kind of my new raw font and now i can go into my c drive and go into windows and this should have fonts and so I can type in sans. And so this is the font that I have edited myself. So I am actually going to save that off somewhere just in case I screw this up. Although I do have a decent procedure now. I have messed up fonts in the past. I'm just going to drag that off and save it. Stick it somewhere just in case. Uh, and then I'm going to take this guy and delete it. I found that's the easiest way to do. Ah, it's in use. Okay, let me delete it if I wipe this guy out. Now I've changed my font on there. Otherwise, if you delete a font that you're using in Sigwin and try to open Sigwin, it becomes not fun. 
Ugh. You know, I'm gonna have to probably reboot my machine. So I'm gonna go reboot my machine and start over here and wipe this font out. Okay, now that I rebooted, I should be able to delete this font. Now, maybe there's an easier way to do it, but sometimes you just have to reboot your machine. You right click and delete this. And are you gonna go away? There we go. And now I can take the generic one and copy it in. So now this should remove all the special Unicode characters I added to it. It's just a generic one. Uh, but it should... Now does that actually... Eh, you know what? That might still not... That might not work as is. Are you going to work as is? Oh, good. It will work as is. Sigmund's fussy. Okay, there we go. So now I've got my font back, but you can see my Unicode, cut, Unicode characters are messed up. And if I go to there, and I do kittens, and I do SPT, now you should see what it's going to look like without the Unicode characters in the font. There we go. So now I just get these, you know, we don't have the Unicode character font font thing. So that's what you get. So up next, how to use Font Forge to fix this. Okay, tweaking a font you currently have. Now, fonts are actually rather complex. And if you become, there's a lot to know about fonts. Now, I'm not going to go into any great detail, and I'm not an expert on fonts. I just know enough to kind of get what I want to get done. Uh, now, one of the tools I've been using is Font Forge. So you can go here to the Font Forge uh, main page and just download it. It's a great tool. It gives you all kinds of abilities to tweak and edit fonts and create fonts. Um, and I'm no expert, I just know enough to get done. And here's kind of a procedure I've come up with that works with Sigwin. Uh, it should work with most fonts, but there's actually a few things I had to add in there that Sigwin's very particular about what it wants a font to have. Um, but anyway, this is my procedure. So what I do for Sigwin is I come in here and first I change the font because I don't want, I want to choose a font I'm not going to tweak on so that when I restart it, it actually will restart. So I'll just choose terminal here, apply it, save it. So I'm using something that is not going to break me. Uh, then what I do is I go down and I remove. If if I'm going to tweak a font that I currently have, I remove it. So I would take this and I would save it somewhere. I already have saved it somewhere. Um, and then I would delete it from here. So it's no longer available. There we go. So now it's gone. So now in my case, I've... In the previous section, I downloaded it, so I actually have a, a fresh copy of it right now. So this is an unedited uh, font, so you need that. Now, the next thing that you need, if you're going to do this powerline font, if you need, if you want to use the same Unicode characters they're using to kind of be compatible with them, it's easy just to actually go download their font, which is what I did, and figure out which Unicode characters they're putting the branch symbol in, where, where they're putting the big triangle in. And so I found that, and so I can just do a, let me go down the desktop. Oh, let me get out of SBT. Uh, and so I'm just going to clone a Powerline, the Powerline font. Oops. There's a nice repository here that has the Powerline fonts. Now it could be you could just grab these Powerline fonts and they might work for you. So you, if you, that may be the easiest thing to do. Grab these fonts, stick them in there, and select them as your terminal font, and it may just work. But for me, uh, I got some more tweaking to do. Plus, I have my own Unicode character in there. And now, if you haven't already done it, go download Font Forge and install it. It's a pretty simple procedure, but um, get that done. And then open Font Forge. Now, this is my version. I probably should go download the latest version, maybe. You know, let me pause this and go download the latest version because there might be some tweaks in the interface. Okay, so I downloaded the latest version of Font Forge, which looks pretty similar to what I was using before. Um, also, I had to go. Update which uh, 
typewriter font that I grabbed. I actually grabbed the oblique one at first, which I think is a little angled, so I went and grabbed the regular one just in case somebody notices that. Um, but I need to go open that first. So let me go down to my user, go down to desktop, and there is my generic font that I want to tweak. So I can open up this guy, which of course opens another window. And so there's all the glyphs. And so you can go through here and explore and see what's going on with all this. And it's pretty interesting. Uh, I think it changed a little bit. Yeah, these are kind of they're taking up more space now. Uh, anyway, but now, so that's the font I want to tweak. Now, an easy way to tweak fonts is to cut and paste. So I've already, the first thing I want to do is cut is copy and paste the custom Unicode character I made before for myself. It has nothing to do with power lines, just that little bracket. And I've already done that before. So let me go here and say open, which will open a new one. And let me go to my desktop since I have it right here, my original one. So I go to desktop and just call it a new folder, I guess. And there it is. So I'll open up this guy, which at first glance, they look very similar, right? Oops, I don't know about that. So there's a new, mine, old ones on the bottom. And what you can do, I found this little tool, you can go down to, let's see, where is it? Is it view? Yeah, go to view, and then click on go to. And you can type U plus, and then you can put in the Unicode character you want, 20, you want to jump to, 276F in my case, and hit OK. And it should jump down to it. And so there is my Unicode character that I made. Now, if I go here and do the same thing, U plus 276F, you'll see it's empty. And so the nice thing I can do is I can say right click, copy, right click, paste. And there you go. Uh, also above it, you can see this little symbol here. That's what the Unicode character in theory typically looks like. So I actually chose this on purpose because it is a bracket. Um, or angle or whatever you want to call that. Now, now I need to copy over the what you might call the power line uh, Unicode characters. So what I did is I went in here to open again. Let's see, go to my desktop where I downloaded uh, the Git repository. Let's see where did I stick that? That I did. Let's see. Or not. Fonts. Ah, yeah, okay, there it is, fonts. And here's all these power line fonts. So I just kind of went through and chose one at random. I mean, they are a little differently different, so you might figure out which one works best for you. Uh, click on regular. And now, here's the power line font. And the same thing, I want to go copy from the Powerline font to make my life easier. And also, to, I opened up the Powerline font originally to figure out which Unicode character they were using. And I did a little research as to why. I couldn't find a clear answer, except for they're not really used for anything else currently. So you might, might as well go with whatever Powerline's going for now. So you look for uh, E0A0. And you can see here are the special fonts they're using these guys. And so I really, really only need this and this and maybe that, but I'm just going to copy them all because they're using it for different reasons and I may, might want to reuse I might want to use in the future. So here I can go to U plus E zero A zero, right? And we can see I'm blank. And so same thing. Copy. Oh, actually you can shift and click all of them. I think I can copy them all at once. No, put them in the right place. He says, hopefully. Oh, now they do them in a row. Okay, so let me not do that. Makes sense for those, though. Let me paste. Might need to delete these guys. Clear. There we go. Um, I'm not sure why they're pushed down a little bit, but that's just kind of there. Uh, and that's E0, B0, which is right there. 
and copy and paste. And so, of course, you can always open these. If you double click on them like that, you can go crazy and change every little aspect of it if you want. I'm not, because they're fine enough for me right now. So now, there I go, I've got my font. Now I need to create it, but I've also got to tweak it a little bit because I need it to be monospaced and I got to fix the width and all this stuff. Um, so there's a few little procedures to that. So, the first thing I do is I say, oh, you know what, I thought I copied my procedure over, or did I? No, let me go open up my procedure so I can make sure I'm doing this right. Okay, I got my procedure open so I can actually follow it now. So I would go uh, edit, let's see, select. Did you move things on me? Select edit. Oh, there we go. Okay, so go to edit, go to select, and you need to select glyphs worth outputting, which will basically select all your glyphs that exist. Because if you uh, you don't want to make if you're trying to make empty glyphs for ones that don't exist, it just gets bigger and bigger. So that selects all the glyphs you want that are important to you, and then we need to force them to be mono space. And this is kind of if you you may not need to do this, but I have to do it for Sigwin because Sigwin is really finicky. So I would go to metrics and set the width. And I would set one, two, three, four. In this case, that's fine. And this will set them all to one, two, three, four. It just kind of forces the issue. And so it takes a little while, or maybe not. And then I have to do something else to make sure to force them to be monospaced. And this is one of the things I've discovered, but this is where I'm not a font expert. I just figured out enough to get the job done. So go to Element, Font, Info. Let's say we have to go down to OS2 and Panos. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. And let's see, which one is it? And then for proportions, make sure that says monospaced. Sometimes I don't. And so if it's monospaced, good. Click OK. And after you do that, then we can generate the font to so go File and Generate Fonts right there. And then you should be able to leave most of this blank or leave it in the default and then click Generate. And of course, it's going to yell at you. Okay, you just click Yes. Oh, I don't want that. Oh, cancel. Oh, you know what? This might be me having had a different selection. Oh, there we go. I don't want that one. I want true type and no bitmap options. Okay, that, okay, you want a true type font. Click generate and yeah, that's fine. It, it always has some kind of error. Click generate. window hiding here. There we go. Okay, just some more warnings. And so now Okay, so now this one, as it is, should be updated, right? I think that's right. So let me go over to my fonts. Go to my C drive, go to Windows, go to fonts. 
And if I'm right, I shouldn't have any sand type right in here, right? Nope. Now this one... Seems like I should have done something else. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, I put it in the wrong location. How about I select desktop? There we go. Select the desktop. And yeah, maybe I'll make a folder. Select up top. Make a folder here. I create, generate in the wrong location. Call it new font. And there we go. We'll stick it in there. Now generate it. Generate it anyway. And there we go. So there's my new font, hopefully. So now we just upload it in here, let it copy over. And hopefully, there we are. Now let's go to our segment prompt. We may have to restart this. Go to my text, go to options, and there's a list. Oh, I have to restart this because look at the oblique one from before. Let me kill Sigma and restart it. Right click, go to my options, go to text. There we go, let's hit you a sans typewriter. Let's see if it worked. Hit OK. Apply, save. Oh, there we go, I got my fonts back. Now let me see if it got everything I wanted. So let me go to SPT. Oh, yes. SPT kittens. Did I get everything I wanted? Hopefully. Oh, oh, look at that. <laughs> Those are a little small, huh? Didn't quite copy them over the size I wanted to. Um, you know what? I probably picked the wrong font to copy over, and last time I got lucky and picked the right one. Let me go figure out which one to actually copy and redo this all. Okay, I think I figured out what I did wrong. So what I had here is I was just grabbing the wrong font. So this Fira Mono Power Line is just not quite the right size. Um, and what I had actually grabbed before, uh, here's the font that I made before. And so you can see these are very different size just from the context. In fact, if I open one up, that's the size of what I want. Open this guy up. You can see not, there we go. You can see not only are different shapes, there's 1234 for the width, and here's 600. So they're different size. That's why that one's tiny. Um, but what I actually did, I used, I used a different font. I just grabbed the wrong one to copy. So the one I actually copied in this case, and your case may differ, um, what I actually grabbed in this case was Meslo. That's one worked. And this one, I guess is M for medium, maybe regular. That one has the right size for me. Um, There we go. So now I can copy these. Now, if you don't have the right size, of course, I could copy these over and I could open them. And I could actually tweak them by hand. So you can actually go kind of nuts and tweak them by hand, or you can actually click on here and actually tell it. You can right click and, okay, get info. There we go. And so I can actually fine tune it if I wanted to. So yeah, I can tweak them by hand if you wanted to. I'm not going to, but if you wanted to, if it's a little bit off, I guess you could do that. Um, but I don't want these anyway, so I'll take these. Those are the ones I have. Those are the ones I want. And paste them in here. And same here. Oop. I cut them out of there. That's weird. Okay, so now those look similar. Okay, so those look right now. So now let me stop using this font just to cover my bases. We'll go to terminal, we'll save. I'll close that. Okay, 
Oh, well, I do have that open door. Get rid of that, close it, and let me open this guy and delete the last one we made. I made. I think you're being used, huh? I have another folder open. Uh, go in here into my fonts, and there is. See if I can delete my typewriter. Delete it. Can you delete for me? Good. Uh, let's see. Oh, things is open. I had FontForge crash for some reason, so I could have things having connections that shouldn't have connection. I'll just make a new new folder to save this into. So now I need to go through my procedure again and fix everything. So let's see, edit, select, not that, uh, edit, select, uh, glyphs worth outputting, and then metrics, uh, set width, one, two, three, four, hit OK. And then make sure I'm doing this right. Uh, element, font info, OS2, Panos, uh, proportion is monospace. Good. So hit OK. And then generate the font. Make sure it's a true type font. That looks good. Oh, and put it in the right place. Desktop, new, new, and generate. And generate, and we have it. So now we open this up and copy it over. And hopefully that fixes me. Now let me open up a terminal and fix which text I'm using. There's the typewriter. Hit save, and you're not right. Ah. Well, at least I didn't get mine. Let me see. It may have the other ones in there. It doesn't have my 2764-6F. But maybe the other ones are in there. I guess I can go look. Oh, so they got in. Let me do a little quick check here. U plus 27, 6, F. Oh. Yep, I don't have it in there. That's my fault. Okay, so I'll fix my, my own font later. So I didn't pick up these changes, but it did pick up the power line changes. So there's that. Um, there's that. I have my branch font, if you will. So that's kind of how I got to this result. So that's um, kind of version two, a little more advanced tweaking of your command prompt in SBT and actually tweaking a font so that you can get this power line effect where you get this nice little branch uh, image out there and you can also get the angle bracket. So, well, I guess that's kind of it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a like. To subscribe, just click the subscribe button. Also, you can follow me on Twitter under the handle at whiteboardcoder.com. View any code I may have thrown up as a gist uh, at GitHub under the username Patman Denver, or check out my blog site at whiteboardcoder.com.